by the time you watch this video will be in November and I am finally doing my September reading wrap up. Sorry. <laughs> Hi, my name is Florence and um, I'm a black woman living in Germany who loves reading books and I try my best to read as diversely as possible. I'm back with my September reads, Better Late Than Never. I did a wrap up on my TikTok so you can watch it if you fo follow me on social media I'm a bit faster when it comes to posting on TikTok and on Instagram but of course YouTube is my home because I lot I watch a lot of videos here on YouTube so here are the books that I read in September and um, I read four books as you can see which for me is on a lower side because I'm a fast reader. I consider myself to be a fast reader, but I went into the deepest, deepest reading slump in September. It was the deepest I've ever fallen. And I almost, I was so worried. I was like, is this the end of me and reading? But I think it's also because I, I traveled a lot in September. I was in Munich for Oktoberfest. And then I traveled to Berlin two times in September. So of course, with traveling and uh, taking taking a day off or two from work, uh, of course, and planning all that, uh, it was just too much for me. And that's why my reading suffered. But I'm happy to report that I'm out of the slump. So let's start with the books that I read in September. Uh, I'll start with the ones that I really, really loved <laughs> and then go to the ones that I think maybe might have even cost my reading slump. So th the first book that I read in September is The Birth of a Dream Weaver. And this is by Ngugi Wathiongo. Um, Ngugi Wathiongo is one of the fathers of African literature. He holds over 10 doctorates, uh, most of them in, I believe, in education or in literature. He's a Kenyan author, and um, this book follows his journey in the 1960s, just before Kenya got its independence from the British. And that is when he was in university, when he went to study uh, higher education, we call it higher education, in Makerere University. And Makerere University was one of the biggest or most renowned universities in East Africa. I would even say in Ken in um, in Africa. So we follow his journey. He talks a lot about his childhood, where he was born. Of course, being born when Kenya was still under the British, as was still a colony of the British, and he talks about, of course, the struggle for India. First of all, the struggle living under the British and uh, the fight for land by the Mau Mau, and just the atrocities that were carried upon the Kenyans and especially the Kikuyu community, which he is from. But even with all, despite all these struggles, he reiterates how his parents, especially his mother, really worked hard and really saw the importance of education and pushed him to go to Mangu High School and then I believe Mangu and Alliance. And then later, then he went to U Uganda to Makerere for his uh, further studies. And he just talks about the experience there, meeting all these great minds. Uh, as you read through the, through the book, most of the biggest authors that we know pass through Makerere. Most of the leaders, people like Benjamin uh, we see people like um, really, really big names who are in the publishing industry, uh, authors. They, there was a time where there was an author's conference and all these big authors like Chino Achebe all came to Makerere University and he was a student there. And he went ahead to write plays that won awards. He got his first publishing deal when he was still a student. So it is the four to five years that he was there and just before the um, end of just just before Kenya got his, its independence, so much happened to him as a writer that made him and started him on this journey um, as, a, as a, one of the biggest writers in Africa. I really, really enjoyed it. It's a memoir. 
Uh, you learn so much, but he also talks about not just himself, but also the struggle against colonialism and his choices when it, it came to the plays he wrote, the stories he wrote, the language he decided to use. I enjoyed this book. I really, really loved it. And I'm glad that it was what, his first book that I've read uh, because it just gives me like an insight into him before I go deep into his uh, work. So highly, highly recommend it. I believe I gave it a five star. Second book that I loved that I think got me out of my reading slump is a Second Class Citizen uh, by Buchi Emecheta. I also have um, full reviews, written reviews of, of all my books. Uh, you can go to Goog uh, Goodreads where I have a profile. I will link it below and you can read uh, all, all the written reviews that I've done. So this is uh, Buchi Emecheta, which is almost an, an autobiographical story based on her real life. So we know Buchi Emecheta as, as one of the biggest, biggest female authors of Africa. She's of Nigerian descent. And um, we follow the story of Ada, a woman from the Igbo tribe. We see Ada growing up, struggling and really wanting to go to school and uh, really working so hard that she stays in school despite her parents' uh, oppositions because at that time, and even now, there are many communities where they say, why, why educate a girl? So she struggles and she excels and manages to further her studies, go to college in Lagos. But of course, to go to college, she cannot live on her own because she's a, a, young, a young woman, a single woman. So she meets this man. She's not really in love with him, but she says, OK, if I get married to him, then I can continue living in Lagos. So she marries him and they start a life together and um, she works hard, gets a job with the embassy and uh, sees an opportunity in that her husband can go to the UK and then she will join him later. So she invests every money that she has and her husband goes to the UK to further his studies. And then later she abandons her job, picks up her children, and they go to join the husband in the UK. But life is not what they expect. She even says in her own words that as, because she went with the ship. So when the ship was docking and she saw the gray buildings and the gray weather, she was like, if someone had told me this was Britain, this was the UK, then I would have just stayed in, in Nigeria. I love Butchie's writing. She talks about the struggles she, she endures, everything that she endures while in, in the UK. On top of the racism, there is a lot of um, hate. Could I say hate? But yeah, there's just a lot of internalized racism from people who are also black and even Nigerians. Uh, there's just no unity. There's no feeling of community. Um, and she wants more for herself uh, and her children. And she ends up having four or five children. And then her husband is just shows his real face. Uh, he's jealous of her achievements and is just trying to bring her down, trying to break her. And uh, we see her really, really struggling. Buchi, or um, in this case, Ada was a very strong woman, struggling against all the odds and uh, wanting to fulfill all, all her dreams and give her children a better life. I really, really love this book. Really, I love Buchi Emecheta's books. I, yeah, I would love to read more from her. This is the second book that from her that I'm reading. The first one was The Joys of Motherhood. And I just love how she portrays women struggling, especially African or black women, our struggles, but also our strengths. I know uh, this, the trait of strong black, black woman is much more, sometimes overdone, but I feel like for most of us, this is the reality. And I just love how her characters fight against all this to really, really get what they want. And uh, highly, highly recommend this. Uh, this copy I borrowed from my friend, so I have to give it back. But I, I really, really want to have a copy for myself. 
The next uh, book that I read that I didn't love in September is Happy Place by Emily Henry. Uh, and this, I believe, was a birthday gift. And um, I think I just saw a lot of people talking about it. So I wrote it as one of my uh, the books that I wished for. Ah, <sighs> what can I say? First of all, it's the it's a story about a group of friends um, who every year in summer they meet together in this cottage um, and they drink a lot of wine and just chill and talk. And uh, because they are all growing up, they're like in their 20s. So everyone is just having uh, di following different paths in their lives. They realize how f how how much things have changed, um, their friendships have changed, everyone's life is different. And in the middle is a couple, um, Harriet and Wayne, who are viewed as the perfect couple. But what people don't know, or the group of friends don't know, is that they separated. They were even engaged, but they broke up. And they've never told their friends. So they're back in this cottage for one last summer because the cottage is being sold. So they decide to keep keep up the the lie, uh, which is like fake dating trope, something like. But there are people, a couple that has broken up. So we follow them, just uh, trying to live this uh, fake life, uh, pretend that everything is okay, but as they are fighting their their own feelings. I did not enjoy this book, unfortunately. Uh, I know Emily Henry is, ve is very popular. Her books are very praised, but I just didn't, it didn't connect with me. I didn't connect with any of the characters. Uh, the love interest between the two, I didn't feel it. I didn't feel like they were a couple. They were just, it was just too fake for me. Um, maybe I'm just not the audience for it. Maybe... Uh, it's for a much younger or younger reader, uh, but I I didn't enjoy it. Um, I love the cover, but I think that's the only thing I can say about it. Only positive thing I can say about it. And last but not least, and I think the book that uh, sunk me <laughs> into my reading slump is Things They Lost by Okwiri Oduor. She is a Kenyan author. Uh, who I even got the opportunity to meet at a literature, literature conference in Berlin. So I, uh, my copy is even signed. Yeah, she even signed it, as you can see. Ah, this book. Um, it is hailed as an exhilarating, sweet and dark telling of a story of a young girl. She's 12. She's called Ayoswa, Ayosa Atarexis Brown. Um, and this is a girl who is trying to, to figure out as she's growing, she's trying to figure out why her mother, who is a photographer, is always leaving her. Her mother is always just abandoning her. Either when she's around, she kind of falls into these like trance so she's not there mentally or uh, and when she's there and when she's awake then she's gone on this long long journey so uh, Ayosa literally lives on her own in her gr grandmother's really downtrodden house um, and in this house there are birds that are called Jolianas and they they keep on saying Joliana ha 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 Jol it is, there's a lot of magical realism in this book. Mm, and it talks about loneliness and the difficult relationships between daughters and mothers because Ayosa meets another girl who also lost her mother. So they kind of become friends. They form this trauma bond between the two girls uh, because they are both, they've both been abandoned by their mothers. And this town is just strange. Um, and I also likes listening to death announce, funeral, death and funeral announcements of people who have died in this town. It is just, it is a spooky read, uh, a coming of age story that is just scoopy and dark and disturbing, uh, but it is so, her, the way she writes, her use of words is 
just so beautiful. She writes beautifully. Uh, but I just didn't like the storyline. It was just too much for me. Can I was just thinking if something can can something be too too good that it's not good anymore. That's that was how I felt about this book. Um, I mean, there are people who love it and there are people who don't. And I think I fall in the group of people who don't. Um, it was just a bit too much for me, too chaotic, too out there. I can read magical realism, but this was a, just a bit too much. There's talk of religion. There's talk of colonialism. She packed a lot into this book. Um, this wasn't for me. And um, yeah. Uh, I'm a bit sad because she's a Kenyan author, but of course, um, it there are books that I love and there are books that I ca I don't love. I was almost going to DNF it, but I thought, Flo, you have this book. Please just finish reading it, and it's even signed. So I read it. I finished it. Took me in a slump, but I'm glad I'm out of it. Yeah, so those were the books that I managed to read in... September, uh, a really difficult uh, reading month for me, but all in all, we we made it through September. Uh, I hope that you enjoyed this video. Have you read any of these books or anything similar? Have you ever been in a reading slump and how did you get out of it? Uh, please share with me. Um, next up will be my October reads uh, and hopefully... I can also talk about the books that I want to read before the end of the year. But yeah, thank you so much for watching this video and hope to see you in the next one. Have a lovely day or night or time that you're watching this. Don't forget to like, subscribe and comment um, what you read in September, what you read in October. I'd love to really, really talk to you guys in the in the in the in the comment section below. So looking forward to reading your thoughts. Bye.